They say a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. But this little fellow here is worth a fortune because we poured a fortune into creating him. Now, uh, the first problem was to make a move. Come on, presto, move. That's it. Come on, show off. Rear back and show off your chest there. That's it. The crowd. It cost a heck of a lot of money, so you should live up to it. Okay, I look forward to Uncle Walt coming out on the wonderful world of color every, I think it was Sunday nights. I didn't really care about all the nature programming and all the other Mickey Mouse Club stuff. I just wanted to see Disneyland and any audio animatronics that they were gonna show us. Uh, this show, this is episode 20 of Mondays with David, to focus on probably the thing I love the most, which is animatronics. Uh, it combines theater, technology, storytelling, uh, all the things that I really, uh, over my life, have come to love. Pipes of the Caribbean and Haunted Mansion were just newly opened. And uh, that kind of blew my mind a little bit with what they were doing between the, uh, just the wonder of the animatronics, like in the Haunted Mansion for those of you who have not seen it, I'm not going to spoil too much, but, uh, you know, the ghosts and the stretching room and, and uh, the little vehicles that take you around. And then, of course, the Pirates of the Caribbean with the water ride and the boats and uh, the pirates frolicking around. It was, it was quite amazing for when I'd been about eight at the time. Uh, and I had a feeling this was something. This was really a big deal. Because I'd always been interested in puppets and marionettes up until that point. But what I saw there was no strings and no hand operating you know, the, the characters. Plus, as I said, it, it combined storytelling and theater elements. And it was just totally, I didn't know what to think of it all at that young age. I think the next thing to open was the uh, Country Bear Jamboree, which again, an animatronic stage show. Uh, that was, I think, probably one of their best shows they have ever done. Uh, and it was a variety show with bears. It was, it was quite amazing. And then probably one of my favorite attractions they've ever done was America Sings tells the history of American music up until about the 60s, and each act was in the center of this theater, and as the, uh, as the show went on, you rotated around, the audience rotated around the stage, it was really cool. It used to be the uh, Calcell Progress Theater, so they repurposed it for that. And that was just an amazing show, too. It is kind of funny as an aside, uh, they shut that down in, uh, I think, well, let's say 1977, 78, something like that. And they built a ride called Splash Mountain, which is based on their movie Song of the South, which will never see the light of day again. Which I, and I thought that was, well, because of, you know, racial issues and all that. But I thought it was funny they moved all the America Sings characters over to Splash Mountain based on a movie that most people have never seen. So, a little Disneyland fun fact for you. Now the, uh, uh, in the 21st century, Imagineers are experimenting with just all kinds of really cool technology. Uh, there's the Mr. Potato Head and the Lime Q, I think, of... Uh, shooting gallery thing and he interacts with the audience uh, and he's able to pull his ear out and put it back and I think he as far as I know the first character to use video screens for the eyes which is another technology they are experimenting with uh, in the new uh, 
Snow White and the Seven Dwarves ride at the Magic Kingdom in Walt Disney World. Uh, they have animatronic characters there, but they're using video for the heads. So their heads look like they would in the cartoon, but they're physical animatronic characters, which is really kind of cool. And then the new Lincoln character in Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln at Disneyland, uh, they've added a, a new head, I guess with a new show a few years ago, which is just fantastic. It's the first character really to have a lot of uh, head uh, and some lip sync capabilities. Uh, normally it just did open its mouth. It really wouldn't form words. And I, I remember when I first saw that, I think in the 60s, it was pretty much the same thing that it was at the 65 World Fair. Yeah, for the time, it was fantastic. For now, it was very simple. But when uh, Lincoln was sitting in a chair and stood up and started to give a speech, it, it was just phenomenal. Oh, and... Uh, I think it's the character of uh, Ursula from Little Mermaid and the Little Mermaid ride at uh, California Adventure. It's just a fantastic character. Uh, with some uh, advanced materials, they're able to really capture uh, something special. There you have it. Just in brief, I didn't want to bore you all and get a little too inside with uh, some of this technology and my interest, but I wanted to at least try and show you where some of my creative process came from. You know, growing up in Southern California in the 60s, uh, for a while we lived in Culver City, so we were driving past a lot of studios and studio backlots, and Disneyland was a major part of my creative life, as well as uh, Jim Henson, and more recently, uh, I admire Tim Burton and his uh, design work. But I digress. Uh, I just wanted to make a comment. You know, everybody thinks that their time was the best and everything else is crap. So I'm going to not say that, but I am. Uh, growing up in the time period of Disneyland, I think, I think was probably the most creative time because the, all the new rides were based on original concepts and ideas from many of the original nine old men that worked for Disney as animators. A few of them became Imagineers and they knew how to tell a story, which is very important. Uh, now, I'm seeing all the rides being turned into and rethemed to movies. Now, don't get me wrong, when Disneyland first opened, all of the rides pretty much were based on Snow White, Peter Pan, uh, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, Alice in Wonderland, things like that. But in the, from the, I'd say from the 60s to the 70s, there were original ideas. Now, everything's being rethemed, like Pirates of the Caribbean ride actually has characters from the movies. Uh, they are getting ready, or they are tearing up a good part of Disneyland to put in a new Star Wars land. They just put a new Cars land in at California Adventure. They're removing a good part, I think, of California Adventure and the Tower of Terror ride to put in, I, from what I hear, a Marvel Land. Uh, and the submarine ride at Disneyland has been rethemed, Finding Nemo, rather than an original idea of, of science. So, I don't know what that says. I find it troubling. But what do I know? I'm just a crazy old guy that works alone half the time. So, anyway, so that's what I have to say, but next week, uh, now that I've given you a little introduction 
to Disney and animatronics, I'm going to show you some of the work I've done over the years for theater and, and whatnot. So, but I do have a, an email from Ask David. And it is from, oh, a Sean from Luck, Wisconsin. Welcome aboard, Sean. And he asks, in a very sarcastic tone, I may add, if your show is called Mondays with David, why do you sometimes publish it on Tuesday? Well, Sean, I'll tell you. Because in the height of art show season, I'm usually traveling on Monday, and it's hard to edit when you're driving. So, there. And for that question, there's one right there. You will get, minus the pens of course, a nice Sleeping Dragon Studio coffee mug that you can use for any beverage of your choice, not just coffee. Well, I think that's about it. Come back next Monday and I'll show you some animatronic characters that I've worked on. And until then, I'm David.